Welcome back everyone to another rapid response. And the comment for today is coming from Golden Wigs who asks, who do you think would be the ideal first villain Batman faces in his career? This is actually a question I have thought about a lot over the years just because I think there is always a discussion to be had when you make an origin story for any character really. It doesn't even just need to be Batman. One of the biggest questions you all always ask yourself is, okay, who is the villain for this story? But with Batman, considering he probably has the biggest rogues gallery of any DC hero in DC Comics, there are so many villains to choose from, some who are really popular and some who aren't, that could make a really good starting point for his crime-fighting career. And I truthfully think there is an argument to be made for almost anybody if you have the right story, really. It could be the Joker, it could be Scarecrow, Crow, it could be Bane. However, I think the ideal villain that Batman would have to face in his career, because I think it makes so much sense, is Penguin. In certain stories, we know that Penguin has a vendetta against the Pennyworths and even against the Waynes as well. His family, including himself, are very jealous and selfish people. Now, arguably, the most ideal fitting for Batman is the mob, and very often the first person or sect of people that Batman spends his time trying to get rid of is in fact the Falcones, the Maroonies, and whoever else is a mob boss inside of Gotham. But for Batman's first rogues gallery villain, a character who's going to be able to stand amongst all of these other characters who will one day give Batman problems, the reason I have Penguin as his first villain is because he also shares that mob mentality. Penguin comes from a rich, fashionable family. He comes from a household and a world that you would imagine would have shady dealings in their past. He has trafficked drugs, he's trafficked weapons. This is a perfect placement for him amongst the mob families of Gotham City. Also too, when you look at it from the perspective of Bruce Wayne being the son of Gotham, the last son of Gotham, and having every powerful person within the city of Gotham looking at Bruce Wayne, hoping for his downfall, in hopes that they'll be able to regain control of the city, they will gain that attention. It makes sense that Batman's return to Gotham is being plagued by a rival family who does have shady mob dealings, is trying to get the other upper hand on a family in Wayne who has struggled ever since Martha and Thomas have been dead. Penguin is not just a character who's going to be a rival to Batman. He's going to cause problems for his personal life as well. He is threatening Bruce Wayne and Alfred Pennyworth. He wants them out of the picture. Penguin would not just be any regular mob boss. He would be the leader of all mob bosses. He would sit at the very top of the leadership ranks, even above Carmine Falcone. Every mob faction in Gotham City, no matter how powerful they may seem, at the end of the day, either A, they do not hold the power that Cobblepot has, or B, they actually all answer to him and they don't do anything unless he says or gives reason to do so. Cobblepot is the one who has divided Gotham equally into different sections for each mob family so that they can operate freely in their own sectors. He also has the right to say yes and no depending on what deal goes through between two mob factions. If he thinks it would tip the scale of power in another group's favor over the other, he can sign off on it at the end of the day. And if you go by Penguin's word, if you don't listen to him, there will be consequences for you and your family. The Iceberg Lounge that acts as a club, a bar, a gala, a nice dinner setting, whatever you want it to be. This is just a front. Any person with a brain, anybody who knows how to work that brain at the very least, would know that 
Iceberg Lounge is a shady place behind the scenes. They all know that Penguin is up to no good, or as the public would know him, Oswald Cobblepot. But because there is no definitive proof of what's going on behind the scenes within that club, the things that move through that club, the papers that are getting signed in that club, there's nothing you can do about it other than enjoy his entertainment. Also, the look to Penguin. He looks like someone that you wouldn't take seriously, someone that you could simply walk all over on, but that is just not who the character is in any way, and that's almost what gives him the advantage. The ability to fool people into what they want to see is not true. Penguin really has everything at his fingertips for success here in running Gotham the way he sees fit, just of course not legally. And I almost feel like there's a lot of people who would feel this way as well and say, how about Black Mask? And 100%, he could be a suitable first villain for Batman. However, within this ideal story I've built, Black Mask himself would also be under the rule of Penguin. But Penguin is smart. He doesn't send out his men to do many jobs. Penguin himself is never seen doing any dirty work work, or at least in the vicinity of any dirty work. He ensures that other families do what he needs to be done, or he makes sure that he has a close maybe two, three, four guys who can get in and get out without ever finding out who did the job that needed to be done. Penguin knows that he has a business that is entertaining regular people and even governmental officials. The last thing he can do is be seen doing anything unethical or criminal-like. But let's be honest here too, if you have that much power in Gotham City, Penguin definitely 100,000% has government officials, police officers on his payroll that will allow him to get away with certain things. And with Bruce Wayne gone for so long, it's given Oswald Cobblepot this ability to, like I've said, control Gotham the way he sees fit, once again, in a very unethical manner. He's not here to make Gotham a better place unless it's for himself. So with Bruce Wayne coming back, obviously the Waynes being the powerhouse of Gotham, and why so many financially successful families in Gotham hate the fact that he comes back, is because he immediately changes things. Wayne Enterprises becomes bigger than it ever has been before. Bruce Wayne, even to shadow his true nature, as Batman starts changing things around the city with his own funds or the funds of his company to make it look like Bruce Wayne is trying to make the city a better, safer place. And of course, this young Batman hiding through the Good Samaritan facade of Bruce Wayne, this catches the attention of Penguin, who ends up saying, screw this kid, why did he even come back? The Waynes were practically dead and gone when he left. His company was crumbling. He thinks he can change Gotham within weeks of coming back. I've always had a vendetta against the Waynes. I am going to take that brat out. And now this young, inexperienced Batman needs to basically climb up the ladder to take down this massive mob empire that he knows is being run by Penguin, but he cannot just jump to the top. He needs to find sustainable evidence, and he needs to start at the smaller crime families, like a Mortal Kombat tower, and make his way up to the top dog, and once he starts getting to Moroni, or Falcone, or even Black Mask, that's how you know he's getting close. However, there is one thing I would change or add to this situation, and if I were to make a Batman story, a perfect Batman story in my image, this is one thing I can tell you right now would more than likely happen. Penguin, more or less, would be responsible for the death of Bruce Wayne's parents. We all know the stories of Joe Chill basically being hired by Carmine Falcone to kill the Waynes in an alleyway. That's how the story still goes, and that in a way is what still happens. But as I said to you earlier, 
Penguin is a smart man. He chooses not to get his hands dirty, but he manipulates other people to do it for him. He hates the Waynes so much and was so sick and tired of having Thomas and Martha at the front and center of Gotham City that he ordered Carmine Falcone to get somebody to kill the family. At the end of the day, it is looked at as an extension of the Falcone crime family, but it truthfully and actually comes from Penguin. It was his master plan all along. So whereas Batman thought my main goal is to take out the Carmine Falcone crime family because of what they did to my parents, but while I'm at it, why not just take out the top dog in Penguin too? His actual vendetta is against Penguin, because Penguin was the one who started this all along. So there it is, guys, my ideal first villain for Batman, and basically the story, the idea, the consequences that all come from Penguin being his first villain, at least in my opinion, in my views. So you guys let me know in the comments below who you think Batman's first ideal villain should be, at least within the terms of your story. But that is all I have for you on this one, everyone, and until next time, I will talk to you all very soon.